Hello and welcome to Traveler's Tokyo by Keep Exploring Games. This is a two to five player game that takes roughly about 45 to 75 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Traveler's Tokyo, you are playing as a tourist. You have three days and three nights to travel around Tokyo, one of the world's greatest cities, and explore. Use your time and your energy wisely as you move from different locations using either the train, the taxi, the bus, or even your own Chevrolet to try and gather as much cool things as you can. It could be stuff like eateries or shopping or taking pictures of the park. It's really up to you. Now, there's of course different things you can do in the game like events you can complete, missions you can successfully achieve, and places that you must see. And as you travel, you'll be placing little visitor markers indicating that you've visited these locations. At the end of the game, whoever has earned the most points by visiting the most locations, playing down the most must-see cards, and completing the most missions will be the winner. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Traveler's Tokyo, the first thing you do is take out the main game board and place it within reach of all players. From there, you'll take the round and phase markers and place them down, one on the sun and one on the Friday marker. Each player is going to get a colored meeple to represent their character traveling around Tokyo. Place them in any of the different locations that you would like along the game board. And then you're going to take the hotel markers. Shuffle them up randomly and place them down on the board, making sure that their X side is facing down. These are going to be bonuses you'll get at the end of the round if you visit these hotels. The last thing you will do for the main game board is you will go ahead and flip over three must-see cards from the must-see deck. See deck. These are going to indicate three locations. Place the event marker on each of the locations on the game board. I have the Meiji Shrine, Tokyo Station, and Hamariku Gardens. After that, you're going to go ahead and take the decks. You'll have the culture deck, which you will shuffle and place some within reach, the resource deck, and of course the must-see deck, which is already out, hopefully with three locations, and indicated on the game board. Take the mission deck, shuffle it, and deal out three cards, and then place on the, each of the cards one of the day markers. This will indicate a mission that you have to complete by the end of that day in order to score extra victory points. Each player is also going to get a player board. These player boards are going to get cubes of your color along with markers of the various different icons in the game. You're going to take a teapot, a shopping cart, a ticket, a food and restaurant, and of course a camera, and place them on the indicated spaces on the far left hand side of your board, as well as the cubes of your color will be placed on the highlighted spaces of each of the numbers for each of the tracks. Place one extra one on the top right hand side, that is your time tracker, place it on the three. Then go ahead and set aside the first, second, and third place uh, tokens for the end of game scoring and any other things you will not be using such as extra meeples and cubes. Give each player a handy dandy um, player reference card as well as seven cards of their choice. If it's your first game, we recommend you doing it this way. Two culture cards, two must-see cards, and three resource cards. And then... You're ready to go. Give somebody the first player marker and let's start playing Traveler's Tokyo. When playing the game Traveler's Tokyo, you'll be playing the game in turns and rounds. Each player is going to get four turns and there are going to be uh, three rounds in the game. On your turn, you will get three energy, which are considered your actions that you can play. And after you've played all of your energy, then it'll pass to the next person. And it'll go around like that, moving this daytime timer until it gets to nighttime, in which case you'll move on to the next round. Hopefully you've been in a hotel. At the end of the last round, you'll score points based on locations that you visited, missions that you've completed, and of course your board here, which will score you points for all the five different various categories. And of course, um, being able to get as far along the track as you could possibly do so. Now, on the game, you have your three time, which is basically your actions for the game. And if you look at your handy dandy reference sheet, it will explain what you can do. So it's my turn. I'm the first player and I have three time. The first thing I could do is I could move. To move, it will always cost one time and it will also cost either money or energy. If I want to take a train, I can go ahead and move from one space using any of the train lines. And the train lines are any of the lines on the board except for the green ones. And you can move from one line of that color to any other line as long as it fits that color. So I could go from um, Akihabara, Electronic Town, all the way down to Nimo, uh, Nihombashi, uh, Mitsukoshi, <laughs> uh, and I can keep 
following this yellow line to Tokyo Station, to Ginza, uh, and, and I can stop wherever I want. I can keep going or stop. It's only going to cost me one time and one money. However, I could also take the bus. The bus is the green line on the board, but I can only move up to three spaces. The next thing I could do is I could take a taxi. A taxi will let me move anywhere on the board, as long as it's connected, up to five spaces. I have to pay $2 as opposed to the one for the bus and the train, though. And finally, I can use my Chevrolet legs. I can walk. Uh, in order to walk, you have to spend one energy as opposed to money, and you can move one to two spaces. You can move basically any, any adjacent space that is connected. And that's how movement works. It's pretty simple, being able to travel along the game board, using a train or a railway system to move all the way across, but only following the rail, using the bus to take the different exit stops and whatnot. It's probably a little more versatile. However, you can't go as far. And then, of course, the taxi being the most versatile, but the most expensive, and then walking, allowing you to kind of maneuver, but not get very far. The next thing you can do is use your culture action. You can spend one time to use a culture card. In order to use a culture card, it will say what the cost is in addition to the time, and it will also say where you have to be in order to collect the bonus. So in this case, I have a card that shows that I need to, uh, I, I get a ticket as long as I spend an energy and a, a time, uh, and I have to be on a location that actually has a ticket in order to do so. But yeah, I would spend the resources and I would collect the bonus, provided that my location has that bonus printed on it. And that is how a culture card works. And the, that when I spend in order to gain those bonuses, it's pretty simple. I'll just simply move my token of the appropriate type or types uh, to the right-hand side of my game board, one space at a time. I collected a ticket, I move my ticket marker one to the right. The next thing that I can do is I can visit. When visiting, there's two things that are gonna happen. The first thing is you have to make sure that you're on the space and you have to pay the cost. Once you pay the cost, you then get the appropriate bonus. You'll move that on the right-hand side of your game board based on the marker or markers that are indicated on the space. And you are also going to check to see if you completed a must-see, whether it be in your hand or on the field. Let's say that I need to visit the Meiji Shrine and I am currently on the Meiji Shrine. I can spend the resources here, which says a dollar in energy and two time to gain a ticket. I'll move my ticket to the right hand side. I'll then go ahead and show the must see and be like, oh look, it's during the day. I also get a shopping cart and I'll move that to the right hand side on my game board as well. Then whenever you visit a space, you may only visit it once per game. Uh, you'll place one of your markers uh, from the game board from your game board on the farthest left hand side of the location. This will be used for end of game scoring, it will be used for missions that you need to complete, and it's to show and reference that you've been there so that you cannot go again. And those are the three main actions that you can take. You can visit locations and check the must-sees. You can play culture cards as long as you're on a location that actually has the resource available, and you can move. There's special actions that will let you discard a card um, and use a time and draw back up to three cards. Or so I guess it's discard a card up to three cards from your hand and then redraw cards. Um, and of course, there's a few at the end of round things, which we'll talk about. And I'll also talk about how you have resources. So at the end of the round, after you've taken uh, up to your three actions, you are then going to refresh. You will check the time of day. You will look at your player board and it will indicate the number of cards you're going to be redrawing up to. Uh, in this case here, it's going to go from the day to the like, I don't know, it's dusk time, in which case you'll go from seven cards, to, it's seven cards, seven cards, six cards, and then five cards. And you're always able to draw whatever cards you want from these decks here. Okay, let's talk about resources and how to spend them. Well, basically you're going to have cards in your hand. These are the must-see cards, they're the culture cards, and they're the resource cards. Resource cards are pretty simple. They have a number uh, of resources, a value on them. This one here is two money. This one is a money and an energy. I can spend them to do any of the actions I just talked about. Let's say that I have a culture card and I can't or do not want to use it. I can actually spend the culture card for the currency on the top, right hand, top left hand side of the card. These both are money. I can just simply spend them as opposed to using the resources in order to get rid of them and use it for maybe moving across the locations. And then also the must-see cards. These also can generate you different kinds of currency. And on the top left hand side again, it will tell you what you can use. So all the cards in your hand are not only currency, 
uh, but also can be used as either A, must-sees, or B, culture to move across your game board here. And then resources are always going to give you more, but they are never going to be used for anything else. And that's how you're spending in order to move and in order to visit and play culture on this board here. At the end of the round, like I said, you'll draw back up to a number of cards based on the round. And um, after, all, yeah, after all four turns have been taken, you'll check the first day mission. You'll, you'll go, okay, it's Friday, it's the end of Friday. Who has the most money in their hand? And that player will score the day one victory points. You'll do that for Saturday as well, and then you'll do it for Sunday. At the end of the game, you're going to score points based on who visited the most locations. And there's a first, second, and a third place here, depending on the number of players. You'll also check to see who scored points for the bonus missions. And then you'll look at your game board. As you move on the tracks of the shopping, the tickets, and the kitchen, as well as the photography, there's going to be a value on those. And as you notice, you'll be taking cubes off of that board, allowing you to move farther on the game board, allowing you to gain more victory points. You'll check to see those, those spaces, and that is your victory point value. There's also culture. Whenever you play a culture card, you're going to gain a culture. That's pretty much the only way you're going to actually gain culture in this game is by playing a culture card. So whatever benefit the culture card gives you, it's also always going to give you culture. And in fact, sometimes culture cards will have no benefit, meaning you're just going to gain culture one time when you play the card. Each culture is going to be worth four points for, I believe, the first place and two points for everybody else. And then the main game board points are going to be worth whatever it says based on the icon and where it's located. And that's basically the idea. Calculate all those points up and see who the winner is. And who was best able to travel and visit all the wonderful places in Tokyo. Okay, so what do I think about it? Well, first I'll give you a few caveats. Uh, caveat one is at the end of every day phase, players are going to want to head to a hotel. Heading to a hotel is going to allow you to draw back up to seven cards as opposed to six on the first turn of the next round. And it'll give you a benefit. If you don't make it to a hotel, you might set yourself up later in the game in order to score you additional points, but you're only gonna get to get six of the cards as opposed to seven of your choice. So going to these different hotels and having them be available is important. If somebody's already visited the hotel, you'll simply flip it over and only one hotel can be visited by one person a night because apparently the hotels, only all of them have one vacancy left. Wow. Shocker. <laughs> Another thing to note too is this prototype didn't have extra event tokens, so I marked the event spaces with the other, with other player's cubes, um, but it will. This is a prototype version of the game. It's not fully realized yet. Uh, it wasn't a big issue, but just as, as note, if you were wondering where those event spaces are, I just marked them with other cubes. And you would always, you will always mark these spaces with other cubes. And you're going to always refresh the must-sees every round as well. At the end of every day phase, you'll take rid of those three and put three new ones out. And everybody can utilize the same ones, which is why they don't get re removed when somebody visits one of those locations. Uh, and that's pretty much all the little caveats I have. So what do I think? Well, first thing I think about this game is uh, it's really cool looking. It's very neon. It's very bright. It's kind of like Tokyo after dark. And it, it functions very well. The problem is it is very flashy and you now it's like it's like a twofold thing, right? Where when I'm on a location having to keep track of each of the different colors on the rails and the buses and whatnot and like follow the lines and be like, okay, I need to get here. Where's the best way I can do that? And having to move along, along it's, it just makes it a little bit more complicated because it's hard to see all the different colors and stuff like that. Very, very vibrant everywhere. So I have to like keep track of the different locations as to how to get to places. Now, it's not a super problem, but it was annoying on a few occasions where I had to get across the board and like determine what the best way through was just because there were so many lines going everywhere. Another thing about this game too is this is a game where you're using your cards as not only resources, but also as value. And when you're drawing these must-see cards, you could get a space that you have already visited. You don't have to visit a space that is must-see, but if you visit a space and it isn't a must-see and you draw that card later or it gets drawn, you simply cannot visit it. And so other players can benefit while you can't just based off of luck because you're going to be moving around the game board and attempting to visit spaces. Sometimes you'll need to visit spaces that have the most buying locations or you need to visit each location second. And so those can trigger ways in which you're going to have to basically visit places that may eventually have a must-see or a card that you draw that's a must-see, which means that you're only going to use it as a basic resource. Now, luckily it does have a secondary use, but it still kind of sucks when that happens. And there's a little bit more luck, I suppose, in this pickup deliver than I'm usually used to or like.
Uh, that being said, those are my pretty much only gripes about the game. I really love the idea of utilizing my cards as basically any, any way I want to utilize them. I can use them to uh, visit a location that has a must-see and the specific indicated type, and I can kind of draw and formulate my hand so I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna visit um, the Hamariku Gardens, right? Which has a, a telephone, a, a camera, and I'm also gonna be able to score if it's at night. And also I have a card that has a camera on it. So I can use all three values. I can visit it, I can must see it, and I can culture it all in the same term if I control how I utilize my resources, my energy as po best as possible. Sometimes you might also get bad draws with uh, the resources. Sometimes you might get like energy when you need money or money when you need energy. And that's just a little bit of uh, luck in that I should say as well. But um, the other cool aspect of the game is how you move across the game board. As much as I find it difficult to do so on the occasion, it is really unique and interesting. I can take the bus and basically spend a low fee to go farther, but only on a certain location. Um, or I can take the uh, railway, I should say. The railway is the one that lets you kind of go as long as you want on the different colors. The bus is what lets you travel in more unique ways all around the game board, but at a lesser distance. And then you can start spending more. Um, you could spend more for the taxi to go five spaces, but that extra resource could be very beneficial to you and you might have to spend it to get to where you need to go because the buses or the trains will not take you there. And of course, if you're out of money, you have the ability to use the, uh, the energy to move up to two spaces, which is actually really cool. So I love the different ways in which you can kind of choose to, uh, to distance yourself across Tokyo and utilize the cards as best you can in your hand, as well as the ones that are available for everybody on the game board, all while attempting to complete these missions that you see here. And your main objective is to do what the theme suggests. Visit Tokyo, eat at fine dining, shop at the cool different sh uh, shops in Tokyo, and go to see different things, uh, visit the cultural areas and of course take pictures along the way and as you do so by visiting you'll unlock the ability to open more tracks so if you're not careful you might push one track super super far you might push like the ticket all the way to the very edge of like where where your cube is and if you get another ticket you cannot move it again you have to remove that token, the cube, in order to keep pushing through so visiting spaces is very important you can't just simply go culture and then the way in which you can tell with taking your turn is fine. Uh, going one, two, three, that indicates the number of hours. Everything is like rounds and turns. And the way that it takes actions is in time. So it's everything involves time here as opposed to explaining, oh, it's, it's, it's your turn now. It's like, oh, it's your turn and you have three hours to visit Tokyo during this portion of the day. And thematically, it just works really, really well. The quality of the game is excellent, the board is extra thick, all the cards are well done, everything is very understandable to play. Once you understand the basic rules, I'm probably sure if I, after listening to my video, unless I was, I guess, terrible at it, <laughs> then you guys will be have an easy time understanding how this game works. And once you see it on the table, it'll be very, very simple for how you kind of move along the game board and take the actions for culture and for the must-see location. So there's a bunch of things in this game that look a little more complex than they actually are. Once you sit down at the table and start going through it and kind of plotting your routes, it is a kind of a really fun experience. It feels like you're actually thematically moving around Tokyo, visiting all the different locations and learning about the different locations as well. There's a Pokemon Center in Tokyo. Yep, it's a store. <laughs> anyway, that's the basic side of it. Like, it's, it's fun, it's vibrant, high quality, and a lot of aspects I really enjoy. If you like pick up deliver games, it's gonna be a little, it's gonna be a really fun one for you. Um, there's some minor things in the game that we'll see what happens. And of course the tokens are larger than they need to be for our player boards, but I'm sure that's also a prototype thing. So I don't really usually talk about that kind of stuff because they get fixed in production. Uh, but overall, super fun game, really enjoy it. If you want something about visiting Tokyo and pick and deliver, then this is the one you want to check out. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Travelers Tokyo. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick the game up. And if you've watched more than one of our videos here, maybe this is your second or third, and you think that we've earned your subscription, perhaps you can go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button along with a bell notification button too. That's pretty much it. There's a live stream on Sundays that we have every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on all the platforms that you're aware of. And there's also a whatnot stream on Wednesdays where we sell games, talk about games, and do all kinds of other gamey stuff there at the same time, but on Wednesday. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to traveling in Tokyo with you next time. But I'm gonna visit the better restaurants and take the better photos, and my experience is just gonna be better than yours. 
but we'll do it together. 